Have you ever turned over your favorite box of cereal to read the ingredients list? And if you have, did you understand even half of the ingredients written? Have you ever read the words genetically modified organisms or this food contains genetically engineered food? GMO or genetically modified organisms has been a controversial topic for some time now. More and more people have started to think that GMO could be linked with health-related symptoms and issues. From that tasty box of cereal on the shelf to the condensed milk in your pantry, GMO is everywhere. What is GMO and is it truly bad for our bodies? Hey folks, hello and welcome back to our YouTube channel, True Health. In this video, we will be taking a look in our pantries and cupboards to read the ingredients lists and understand more about GMO products and goods. So, make sure you make it to the end of the video to learn more about genetically modified food, what it really is and if it can really affect our health. Also, please spare a moment to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated with the latest videos from our channel. We post every Friday. To get started, we must first visit the lab to find out what GMO really is. So put on your lab coats and goggles and let's get started with the basics. GMO, genetically modified organisms, is an organism to which biotechnology has been applied. It is a combination of plant, animal, bacteria and virus genes that do not occur in nature or through traditional crossbreeding methods. Sounds confusing. That's because it is. To try to explain it more plainly, GMOs are plants and animals that have had their DNA tweaked by scientists in a lab. Where exactly is it used? GMO first starts with the crops. When farmers plant their crops, they mostly worry about three things. Insects, weeds, and weather. These three things could prevent a good yield. Some GM crops repel very particular insects from feeding on them, while others can produce more crop with less work and less need for pesticides, and some can even help prevent weeds from growing in the crops. Plants aren't the only places that GMO is being used now. GMO is also used to create vaccines and many medicines. Farmers and agricultural companies are the ones that experience the most benefits from GM crops. But are those benefits worth the results and backlash that some are experiencing now because of it? What foods contain GMO? Common GMO foods include corn, soybeans, potatoes, and papaya. In 1994, the first food that was introduced as genetically modified was a tomato. Since then, scientists continue to create GMO. Corn, around 92% of corn in the US is actually genetically modified. Soybeans, which is modified to become herbicide tolerant, drought tolerant, or insect resistant. Roughly 92% is genetically modified and is used to make your daily cereals, baking mixes, tortillas, tofu, and more. Summer squash, which is modified to be resistant against the Lucchini yellow mosaic, that is a virus in squash which can cause deformations, blisters, and stunt the growth of the crop. Canola. It was modified to resist herbicides and limit weeds where it grows. About 95% of the canola grown is GM grown and is used to make the canola oil we so widely use today. Sugar beets. More than half of the granulated sugar you see is GMO grown and it was modified to resist herbicides, making it quicker to grow while keeping weeds under control. Now you may be wondering, if GM crops are so helpful to farmers, why is there such a backlash about it? Well, first we must ask the question. How can we know if GMO is safe? Well, that is the controversial question for this video. Since GMO is a modified DNA in plants and organisms that are not found in nature, it is very unpredictable. Though many scientists say there are no side effects to eating these genetically modified foods, the FDA had failed to keep tight regulations and watch over what is GE, genetically engineered, and what is not. There are no requirements by the FDA to label what is GE on products. Because of this, most consumers are unaware if they are eating something genetically engineered or not. If we don't know, how can we know if it truly affects our bodies or not? You may still see GMO or GE labeled on some products, but most products never get labeled. For those products that we are aware that have been modified, what are the possible health risks recorded? Toxicity. Genetically modified foods are, like I said before, unpredictable, or in other words, unstable. Why is this? Well, first off, to genetically modify something, it is random. Each insertion of a novel gene and accompanying cassette of promoters, antibiotic marker systems and vectors cannot be perfect and in fact is random. 
It's like taking a pair of scissors and snipping a part of the gene from two different things and trying to place them together to match, but GE food producers don't know exactly where the cassette is being inserted in the food. They also don't have an idea enough about food DNA to make sure they correctly placed anything. They are playing with DNA they don't know enough about to create new food and hoping it works out and doesn't become unstable. Another possible health risk is allergic reactions. When it comes to allergies and genetically modified foods, there are a few things that can cause allergic reactions. One of which is that GE can transfer allergens from one food to another. For example, a study by New England Journal of Medicine had this problem when they took the gene from a Brazil nut and placed it into soybeans. Those with nut allergies had severe reactions, thus a pioneered hybrid soybean was abandoned. The second reason you may get allergic reactions from GMO or GE is because these foods could be creating thousands of new unknown allergens and our bodies are unfamiliar with the new modified novel proteins, which can cause our bodies to have allergic reactions. Antibiotic resistance. GE foods could hinder disease-causing bacteria from being resistant to antibiotics which could cause more diseases and infections to increase. A number of European countries have refused to permit Novartis beet corn from being grown for fear. It could cause the gene in the corn to move into bacteria in the food chain, causing ampicillin to be less effective in fighting various bacterial infections. Cancer. If those other health risks weren't scary enough, this next one is one I surely don't want to get involved with. In 1993, the FDA approved a GE recombinant bovine growth hormone, also known as RBGH. It is used in dairy cows to induce them to produce more milk. However, even though the FDA reassured the public that the milk was safe for consumption, regulatory bodies in Canada and Europe have rejected the drug finding a number of human and animal health issues. One of the most immediate concerns was the research that found an increase of insulin-like growth factor 1, IGF-1, in cows treated with RBGH. The FDA failed to consider that IGF-1 found in RBGH milk could and can actually survive digestion and travel to the bloodstreams and intestines, which has now been determined to be important in the growth of breast cancer, prostate cancer, and even colon cancer. Other health risks include Toxic effects like hepatic pancreatic, renal, reproductive effects and may alter the hematological, biochemical, and immunologic parameters. With all the GMO in today's food, it's hard to trust what you eat. What are some alternatives if we don't even know what contains GMO and what doesn't? Well, for starters, if you can't understand the ingredients on your packaged boxes of goodies, don't buy them. When in doubt, throw it out. It's better to be safe than sorry. Next time me to go grocery shopping, look for organic fruits and vegetables. But if you really need that bag of chips, or you can't stop the cravings for your favorite box of cereal, try limiting the consumption. The more you know about what you eat, the easier it gets to not eat it, especially if health is your goal. Know your body, learn what it wants and needs, and take control over it to build a better you. Being healthy doesn't have to be hard, but it does require some knowledge, and that's why we're all here to help. So that was it everyone about GMO and GE foods. Thank you so much for choosing True Health. Please make sure you like, comment, subscribe and hit the little notification bell. Also, please share the knowledge you have learned here today with someone else. See you next time.